Welcome to RCSJ Today. I'm your host, Angie Pacini. For more than a year, I've been hosting this show from my laptop or on location. Today, I'm excited to be joining you from the TV studio. It's my first time here, so please bear with me as I get used to my new surroundings. I'm happy that my first guest is also a friend, Director of Student Affairs and Military Services, John Ryder. Thank you for joining me. Not a problem. John, you and I are both veterans, and I appreciate the effort you always put into our Veterans Day celebration. But this year, you had to miss our event because you were receiving a very special honor from our governor. Please tell us about it. Yes, uh, Rowan College at South Jersey received the uh, We Honor Our Veterans uh, Award from Governor uh, Murphy. Um, I was presented with the award at Homedale on uh, at Homedale's uh, Vietnam Veterans Memorial on Veterans Day. Um, I was honored because not only did we receive the award, but we were the only two-year college that got to receive it uh, because of the initiatives we've taken um, met much of the criteria around the award is based on a four-year university. So our initiatives kind of mirror things that four-year universities are actually doing, and we pride ourselves in how we're handling that on our campus. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. You couldn't be here with us on Veterans Day, but you still made sure that our veterans were honored here at Rowan College of South Jersey. Can you give us some details about the ceremony? Yes, um, every year we, um, we co-host the uh, Veterans Day ceremony with the Gloucester County Commissioners. Um, this year, obviously, I couldn't be present, um, but I made sure things you know, were in place. My boss, Samantha Van Coy, um, who is the executive director of student engagement. She filled in and backfilled my spot to make sure things ran smoothly. Um, my staff in the military services office, Tari Germano and Laura Easter, they provided additional support. Um, we were, I would say, blessed to have the amount of veterans present uh, that you know were there. We also always get support from our Camden County Emerald Society. Uh, the Warrior Watch group that showed up. Um, we we are very you know we receive a lot of support for the vet, you know the Veterans Day event, and I'm looking forward to making that a little bit bigger each year as we're coming out of this COVID dynamic, where we can only have limited crowds. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Rowan College of South Jersey has a strong commitment to supporting those who have served our country. What are some programs your department offers to our veterans and their families? Well, some of the things we offer currently right now is our peer-to-peer, -peer, um, you know, student uh, advisement. We have a veterans bookshelf. We have a veterans lounge. Um, we're also looking at various initiatives throughout the year that we can offer, such as a, you know, in the springtime we offer a stand-down event, um, which brings in resources and, and other services for our veterans. Um, I'm always open to new things. We did lunch with a veteran um, a couple years ago when we were allowed to gather, um, which was very successful. Um, so I'm looking to bring that back again because uh, our staff really enjoyed that day. So I'm looking to do that again. And like I said, I'm always open to new things and bringing things to our campus for our veterans. I understand that you'll be expanding the programs at our Cumberland campus. Yes. Um, one of the things that I was tasked with um, as of September 1st is I will be overseeing military services on both campuses. Um, so what I'm looking to do is bring that same enthusiasm and uh, those initiatives that I, I've initiated here, which has gotten us our military friendly status and we are uh, honoring our veteran status from the governor. I'm looking to bring those same things down to Cumberland and um, I've already established a veterans lounge on the campus. Um, I've got an office established in the academic center um, at, on the Cumberland campus. So as of spring of 2022, we will be processing all military benefits um, down there. So my staff of Terry and Laura, they will be um, the main points of contact for processing benefits down there. Uh, we're looking to expand the office at some point, but right now we're getting our feet wet and, you know, trying to initiate a lot of the same initiatives down there. It's, you know, 
it's building blocks. We're, we're building right now, so more, more to follow. Thank you so much for being my first guest, John. Uh, not a problem. I, I enjoyed you know, our interaction and talking about our veterans. And I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize the fact that we're sitting here in the studio and our student veteran of the year is operating the camera here. So a little shout out to Venu and to the radio, television, film uh, courses here at RCSJ as well because our student veterans are excelling with the programs that we have here. So thank you for inviting me. Thank you, and we'll be back with more RCSJ today. Are you ready to find your fit at Rowan College of South Jersey? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to find my fit in human resources, in engineering technology, in healthcare. With six divisions that include more than 100 degree and certificate programs, RCSJ gives you the choice to find a future that fits your goals. Visit rcsj.edu forward slash enroll to start today. RCSJ student Isaiah Green caught up recently with TV news reporter Leon Purvis who shares how his love of journalism was inspired by a class he took at Rowan College of South Jersey. Here's the story. Hello, RCSJ community. Hope everybody is having a great day and welcome to RCSJ Today. I am Isaiah Green, your host for the day, and today we have a special treat for you because we have a RCSJ and Rowan University alumni and South Jersey native in the house. We have Mr. Leon Purvis. Mr. Purvis, thank you for being here today. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing great and I'm happy to be here. That's good. That's good. So uh, as I just said, you know, South Jersey native, let's just start off with this conversation. What does South Jersey and growing up here being a Glassport native, what does that mean to you? Uh, it just means so much, you know, growing up in a small town, uh, Glassboro, New Jersey, growing up 30 minutes from Philly, uh, two hours from New York City, two and a half hours from D.C., uh, you always feel like uh, glass, being from Glasgow, you have like big dreams and uh, aspirations. And just to give you an example, my graduating high school class was 136 students. And so to be able to go out in the world and accomplish different things and seeing like people I went to high school with accomplish different things is just amazing. So it's, it's always that Glassboro pride. And once a bulldog, always a bulldog. Yeah. So you uh, graduated from Glassboro High School and then continued your academic career at the Rhone College of South Jersey. How much of an impact did they have on um, your career as far as where you're at right now? So I would say RCSJ had a really big impact on my career. I remember taking my first journalism class at RCSJ. And uh, at first, I was a little nervous to take the class because I wasn't sure how well I would do in that course. And I wanted to go to RCSJ, get my associate's degree, and then transfer to Royal University to major in radio, television, film, right? And so when I took uh, the journalism class at RCSJ, there was this professor in this class, Keisha Patterson, shout out to her. Uh, we would like do like different like pop quizzes, like current events, and then we would have our certain beats right so say if you had like business or entertainment or health right and you would have that same like beat with someone else in the classroom and you would have to like pitch stories and you'd go around the room and pitch the story and whatever she thought was the best story was the person that got the highest score for that beat contest is that, like it works like a newsroom, right? You go around the newsroom, you pitch story ideas, you're looking for that lead story. So that kind of gave me an introduction of what a newsroom actually works like. And then also the different print journalism assignments that we had, I like the idea of going out to cover something, ask people as many questions as I want to without them asking, why are you asking me this? What just felt like phenomenal and turning that into a story for, of course, my professor at the time, felt really good to me. And actually recently that professor had reached out to me uh, on LinkedIn and she said, as an undergraduate, Leon gave 100% to each and every journalism assignment. He was studious, prepared and showed a command of the profession and the ethics it would require. A large personality, Leon was well liked and respected by his peers. I wish him all the success and hope he thanks me when he gives his Pulitzer speech. Well, I might not be giving my Pulitzer speech today, but I'm saying thank you. That's amazing. That's amazing, man. So 
talking about radio, television, vision, and film and communications, at what point in your life, whether it was high school, younger than that, or older than that, did you feel like you knew that this is the industry that you wanted to be in? Actually, funny story. So at first, I wanted to be a doctor. Uh, when I was, you know, going up in, in Glassboro school districts and uh, even uh, up until a certain point in high school, right? But when I started high school, I started making like YouTube videos just for fun, like on the side as like kind of like a hobby, right? Uh, but I was still like focused on wanting to be a doctor. I was set up to take uh, pre-calculus and honors chemistry. My mom didn't want me to take a science and a math that was going to be challenging in the same semester. She made me drop honors physics and signed me up for TV production one. I was so mad at her. Like, I was like angry. Like, I was like, why'd you do this? Da, 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 da. Like, you know, the type of like kid parent like argument. And then she was like, well, you make YouTube videos. When you take the class, you might end up liking the class. By the end of the class, I knew I wanted to work in television the rest of my life. That's amazing. Man. Blessing in disguise. Now that you're a reporter, describe your experiences of being a reporter ever since you've left Rowan University and what you've done, who you've reported for traveling. Describe that and what uh, that experience has been like. So reporting is different each and every day. So I got my first job in TV in Eureka, California, five hours north of San Francisco, three hours from Reading. So when I graduated college, I toss up my cap, packed my car, Drove 3,000 miles across country in four days by myself. Uh, and I wanted to hit the ground running. Uh, and my goal was to get a job and, and TV upon graduating college. Uh, and just the daily grind of when I was working in Eureka, being in MMJ, coming up with story ideas, turning a package in a VOSAT, having that ready on deadline, you know, posting your stories to the web, all in the mix uh, is what the daily grind is to be in MMJ. And now uh, being a reporter each and every day, it's different in the middle of coronavirus. Uh, currently, I work in Springfield, Massachusetts, and anything can happen in a given day. I could be working on, you know, two different stories, you know, one story for one newscast, another story for a different newscast. But if something breaks at like one o'clock or one thirty, there are situations where those stories are dead and I'm on something else. And they're like, OK, we want you live in this show, this show, that show. You're going to lead all the newscasts. That's amazing. Since you've been doing this, what's been your um, favorite uh, story to cover, or your most like impactful story that you've covered? I love telling stories about people. The thing about journalism is to tell someone's story. So, you know, when I go to the scene of a fire and find out what happened, like for an example, uh, just before uh, Christmas, there was this family in Southwick they lost everything in a house fire, right? Uh, you know, a mom and a dad, you know, they had a daughter a toddler daughter and they just had a newborn baby boy and it lost everything right before christmas and so of course it's always a delicate situation it's always you know i just felt so bad for the family i was like hey listen i want to be able to help you out by telling your story so people know what happened to you so that they can help you out those types of stories about people get me every time got you so being a reporter during the COVID-19 pandemic and having to be shut in and quarantined all the time, what's that been like uh, as a reporter? You know, because that obviously had a major impact on what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. What's that been like? It has a major impact. Uh, so I got here actually to Springfield uh, May of 2020, right before coronavirus hit. I literally, the country shut down, I think like mid-March or whatever. And so I had to work out of a news car. So I was not allowed to at the station, I would call in for our editorial meetings or, you know, have our editorial meetings over Zoom like we are right now and pitch to our ideas and then try to interview people. If I couldn't meet up with them in person, do it over FaceTime, Skype or Zoom. Uh, we wear masks, we social distance, we have social distancing poles and we drive separate news cars from our photographers. That's how it's been like. It's been very, very different in regards to how we do our job. But as journalists, it's very important to keep everyone informed and tell everyone what's going on and be there with them every step of the way. Okay, got you. So for my last question, I'm gonna do a little two in one type question. So what has been the best piece of advice someone who at the time when you first got into the field of communications that was more advanced than you, what was the best piece of advice they gave you? And then what advice do you have for someone that's just getting started in the communications field? <laughs> I love this question. So 
Uh, when I was in college, during my time at Rowan University, I had the opportunity to intern at the Today Show. So all of us Today Show interns, uh, we got to sit down in the room with Hoda Copy, who's now co-anchor of Today. And uh, Hoda Copy uh, had told us how she drove around the southern eastern side of the uh, country, went to 27 different news directors, and got 27 different notes. And it wasn't until she got to Greenville, Mississippi, where she got that one yes. And that's all it takes. You don't need everyone to like you. You only need that one person to like you, that one person to give you a chance, that one person to give you a shot. And so knowing that gave me like, all right, like I just got to shoot a whole bunch of darts at the board, whatever sticks, sticks. If it doesn't stick, if only one sticks, I'm good. And so I think that's kind of the best piece of advice. You are going to get a lot of no's, but you can't take no as an answer. You have to be consistently persistent. You have to keep pushing. You have to keep grinding. You know, why not you? Yeah, definitely. That's very impactful. And Mr. Purvis, do you have anything else you want our RCSJ Today community to know? The universe is the limit for you too. You're doing a great job, Isaiah. You know, you got to book out. Make sure you people, you know, if you haven't heard of Isaiah Green, look him up. He has an interesting story. Thank you. Thank you. So we want to thank everyone in our RCSJ Today community for watching Mr. Purvis's story and continue to follow us for more content. And until next time, I'm Isaiah Green from RCSJ Today. Have a good day, everybody. At Rowan College of South Jersey, we're ready to help you find your best fit. With more than 100 degree and certificate programs and on-campus and online learning options, it's easy to find a future career that fits your goals. To take a tour or learn about programs, advising, financial aid, and more, visit rcsj.edu forward slash enroll. Welcome back. You can participate in a free art project that will become part of a permanent sculpture in downtown Millville. Here are the details. Hi, I'm Jackie Sandro Greenwell. I'm at the Arts and Innovation Center in Millville, New Jersey. The project that we're working on today and throughout the until the springtime is called the Community Clay Project, Building Communities. Today, we just had a group of students in to add to our community clay project. I received a donation from Diner Brick Company, and I wrote a grant from the Cumberland County Cultural and Heritage Commission they, and received the grant to do this project. It involves 700 unfired clay bricks, and when we receive them, they're sort of still wet and we can carve or paint them. And the idea is when they're finished, Clay College is firing them. And then the intention is to add these bricks to a community public sculpture. And we're welcoming groups from not only the college community, but our community here in Millville, different organizations, um, we have some Girl Scout troops coming in. We have Millville High School working on some bricks as we speak. And um, as I said, various um, members of the community as well as businesses and just the general public. If you would like to join the project, um, it's totally free. I have all the materials. Um, just give a shout to me at my email, Jackie Sandro Greenwell, or uh, Randy Wilfong, who is my um, admin specialist, and just email us and we can um, arrange and schedule uh, a workshop for you to come in, do and decorate a brick. <laughs> Even if you don't want to do a brick or decorate a brick, we have other workshops and classes. If you're interested in pottery at all, um, come down and see us. We also have a beautiful retail space and gallery, and you can do your holiday shopping there. So please come down to the Arts and Innovation Center, 321 High Street in Millville, and we hope to see you soon. Are you ready to find your fit at Rowan College of South Jersey? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. To find my fit in human resources.
in engineering technology. In healthcare. With six divisions that include more than 100 degree and certificate programs, RCSJ gives you the choice to find a future that fits your goals. Visit rcsj.edu forward slash enroll to start today. Every year, members of our Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society work together on a Nationals Honors in Action project. Here's a look at their most recent effort. Hello, I am Jackie. I'm one of the co-advisors for PTK on our Gloucester campus. Here with me today, I have Sam Bicking, our president for next year, as well as Ashton Paladino, our president from this past year. Today, we're going to be talking about a project, Honors in Action. Although I know what it is, Sam, could you kind of describe what Honors in Action is? Sure. So Honors in Action is a research that Phi Theta Kappa chapters conduct each year with several goals in mind. So PTK chapters internationally research based on one of seven themes with the chosen topic. This year we chose the theme Hairs of Our Ways and specifically researched the topic of stereotypes. Ashton, why did PTK pick um, the stereotypes as your, your subject? This was based on a lot of kind of debate and kind of reflecting, you know, on the past year. Uh, so our main research was whether people were born criticizing others or if it was more of like a learned behavior, you know, from other people or family members. So we really did pick this in topic in sight of all the racial injustices going on. And we thought this was a very important topic. You know, me, my officer team and actually our PTK community thought of this topic was important to discuss because of everything that was happening. And what did the research find? Our research found that exposing stereotypes and, pre and prevention methods can be effective in the fight against stereotypes. However, it will take more than one society, group, or culture. So stereotypes will continue if action is not taken. So our chapter collaborated with others to produce our video and take action. As a society, we knew we had to start somewhere. So we made our impact with the hopes of prevention and the spread of awareness of stereotypes. Awesome. So I know Sam just talked about action. Um, in honors in action. So how did we come up with the action project? Yeah, so we need to brainstorm something that everyone could access over a virtual world. And obviously, it's very hard because this has never been done before. You know, honors in action was always an in person thing, and it was never online. Uh, so inside of, you know, brainstorming, you know, we had multiple ideas, but we decided on a video because we could share this with everyone. And we thought it was the best option to reach as many people as possible. Awesome. So part of the video um, that we did this year was um, different members of our PTK Alpha Psi Pi Society opening up about personal stereotypes. Um, Sam, was it hard for you to open up about your own personal stereotype you've encountered? For some members, it was harder than others. So personally, it was not necessarily hard, more so that it was about identifying my own story enough to elaborate on the stereotypes against me. Because I knew the stereotypes, but it was queer putting them into words that felt genuine and did not make me sound as though I was still believing in those stereotypes. It took me years to learn. I was none of those stereotypes that people were putting on me. So sharing made me think, more about my growth. I was nervous that I was that I would be judged and rather than accomplishing the goal. But I coped and grew to ignore it because I was motivated and had the support of my PTK family. And I could imagine that other chapter members probably felt the same way in to some extent. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, overall, Ashton as the PTK president from this past year, what do you hope that people who watch this video learn. You know, Sam talked a lot about, you know, her stereotype and, you know, how people judge her based upon that. And even my personal experience of how I dress very alternatively, a lot of people just think, you know, I'm uneducated and, you know, that my opinion doesn't matter because maybe I do drugs because a lot of, you know, in movies and other things, a lot of alternatively dressed people get criticized and they're made to seem uneducated and they still live in their mom's basement, which is obviously not the case for me. So for me, it was important that people learn to stop judging people on their looks because you never know the actual person just 
because of how they look. Because in honesty, you know, me, you know, dressing like that, it, I, that's just what I like to look like. You know, that's how I want to present myself to other people because that's just the style I like. And I feel like that has nothing to do with my character or, you know, my education level. And I think, you know, personally, that's what I wanted people to get out of the video. And I feel as though we did a good job with that with everyone. So, I 100% agree. And also, even today, you're a little bit of alternative dressing. And I also see those medals hanging around your neck. So there you go to find it again. <laughs> um, looking at next year, I know, Sam, you are the selected president, which is great. Um, is honors in action something that will continue with PTK? Is it something that other students could be a part of? Yes, we will have an honors in action next year. And we encourage others to join as we embark on another research endeavor. Awesome. Thank you both for sitting with me today. And I do just want to throw a shout out that this year at regionals, our Honors in Action project did get regionally recognized, which is a huge accomplishment for our chapter. So thank you both and for continued success. Um, I'm looking forward to next year. Yes, thank you so much, Jackie. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. Here's a look at some highlights from our Veterans Day ceremony. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet away or the land of the free and the home of the Vinny was born in India and came to the United States at the age of five. In 1999, he began his college journey before joining the United States Marines in 2004. In 2006, he married his wife. Very shortly after they were married, he was deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, where he served from 2006 to 2007. He received many awards during his time of service. He currently lives in Swedesboro with his wife and their 11-year-old daughter. He's a current student at Rowan College of South Jersey with plans to transfer to Rowan University. Please help me welcome him to this stage. I want to recognize the staff at Rowan College. I have been at six different colleges throughout the United States, and I can tell you that Rowan College has one of the best veteran programs that I've ever seen. I want to say a big thank you to all the staff, to all the counselors, to every single person that is working diligently at this college to ensure that our veterans are taken care of. I'd like to say thank you to every one of you that came out here today uh, to honor the veterans here and to appreciate um, all the veterans. Uh, we should always remember the sacrifices that veterans have made. Uh, I was in Fallujah. And I know that some of those young people never made it out. Some of those Marines who wanted to come home never came home. And those parents, sisters, brothers, uncles never got a chance to say goodbye. So that's the reason why we should honor veterans, not just today, but every single day of our lives. Every time you see a veteran in the stores, make sure you let them know how much you appreciate what they have done. And for those who could never go to the war zone or Iraq or Fallujah, they did it for you so that you don't have to do it. So let's honor them every single day of our lives. That's it for this episode of RCSJ Today. Scan the QR code to see past segments. Thanks for watching.